Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The former WBC champion Deontay Wilder still wants to fight Tyson Fury next, according to his co-manager Shelley Finkel. Also in this video, Otto Varlin is calling out Tyson Fury saying, give me the rematch that I deserve because I put up a better effort against you than anyone else ever has. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But first, the Shelley Finkel and Deontay Wilder stuff, because the story has moved quite quickly in the past week. There were some uh, stories that emerged in the UK saying Fury Wilder 3 was abandoned, then Shelley Finkel denying that, uh, Frank Warren, Bob Arum, the co-promoters, not completely saying it was off and then all of a sudden Fury comes out and says he's moving on. Now Bob Arum is saying look the contract has expired and ESPN has contacted Shelley Finkel, Wilder's co-manager, who's reacted to that saying of Bob Arum he's entitled to his opinion. He can think anything he wants. Deontay Wilder and I would like to have the fight next as planned against Fury. We'll fight him any date, any place. So those are the comments of Shelley Finkel. So there's actually a few questions for me that come out of those statements, because if that was the case, we'll fight him any date, any place. How could they have let the contract expire uh, without something being locked in in terms of a fight happening next for Fury Wilder 3, which obviously was the original plan. Deontay Wilder was beaten in February 2020, and there was meant to be a rematch. Originally talked about for July, then October. Then for months, Bob Arum has been saying, you know, Las Vegas, December the 19th is the working date. But now we have a situation that suddenly from Bob Arum, he is saying that uh, the contract has expired. There's no obligation to face um, Deontay Wilder next. And Tyson Fury has said, look, I'm not going to. I've moved on. I'm sick of being mucked around. I didn't want to have a fight in 2021. I'm ready to fight now. And Fury himself has been training for quite some time for a second fight, you know, by himself and then more into a formal training camp more recently with Sugar Hill Stewart, his trainer, traveling to the UK. They're preparing for something. And we all thought it was going to be a third fight, but um, no longer. And it begs the question, any, anywhere, anytime, any place. How could Shelley Finkel and co let it all slip away? How could they have not have anything locked in? Because it seems to be that is the case. And if that is the case, which seems to be, if I was Deontay Wilder, I'd be asking question of my own people saying, what's happened here? How could you let this uh, expire? How could you let this get out of the way? I mean, we're only sort of getting some bare bones sort of threads of this, uh, what's happened behind the scenes. But um, yeah, well, I don't know if any legal action or anything like that is going to arise out of this, but the whole I'll fight you anywhere, any date, any place, etc. seems to be a little bit hollow now because uh, shouldn't that have been the case earlier? Wouldn't they have just locked in December the 19th? Because obviously that was the working date for months. What were the issues that precluded them from doing so? Because we have been led to believe that there was um, some holdups on the Wilder side in terms of locking in the date and getting things done. So I'm not sure I'd be very happy if I was um, Deontay Wilder if this has slipped through and I truly wanted the fight. But we don't know all the facts here. I know that there have been some people coming out online saying that uh, Deontay Wilder probably didn't want the fight and he's let this slip through. But I mean, the whole thing is untidy. It's messy. We've only got part of the story. But I guess from what we're hearing now, it's just not happening. And Fury, he's looking at this December 5th date. And in another video, I covered some logical options, which were in the uh, top rank stable, including Ajit Kabayal and also Oscar Rivas being a couple of the leading candidates. But someone who's uh, come out of the woodwork and he fought Tyson Fury in 2019, in which was an unexpectedly more competitive fight than most people thought it would be, is Otto Wahlin the Swedish heavyweight contender, he wants a rematch. And see here, there's been a press release that's put out, uh, been put out here. He's lobbying for a second fight. So the headline says, Otto Valin ready to step in for a Tyson Fury rematch. In the first line, I won't go through it all, uh, but it says that he's the rightful choice for a rematch. So in terms of his quotes, he says, I deserve a rematch based on my performance against Tyson Fury last year. I did much better against Fury than Wilder did, better than anybody who has faced Fury, and I'm ready to take Wilder's place. I've been working very hard since last year, and I believe I've improved with the experience from fighting Fury and with all the work I've put in since that fight. 
And then you have uh, his promoter, Dimitri Salita, saying Otto is en route to being heavyweight champion of the world. He gave Tyson Fury the hardest fight of his life by punches landed and damage administered inside the ring. Now, having fought in August, he's ready to jump on this opportunity and prove he is the best in the world. So this is the uh, the statements from Otto Valin and his promoter, Dimitri Salita. So a full-blown press release issued on this. I guess my thoughts on this is perhaps, you know, they're wanting this fight, but how realistic this is, I'm just not sure. I mean, is there really enough unfinished business, as it were, for us to, um, to want the fight and the demand for that fight to happen? Once you boil it down, you had in that fight Otto Valin landing some punches early on, including those that uh, opened up a couple of cuts. But after that, Tyson Fury adapted in the ring, won most of the rounds, and ended up win winning the fight. Was there that much controversy in terms of uh, the decision, in terms of who won in the rounds, all that sort of stuff, for us to want the fight again? Some will probably argue that the fight should have been stopped and that Otto Valin would be declared the lineal heavyweight champion as a result. And maybe that is the sort of angle to get back in for a second fight. But on the rounds that it went, all 12, did Otto Valin do enough to warrant a rematch? I would sort of say that if he had gone on after that fight and fought some tough opposition and you could maybe make a case to say, well, on the back of that, coupled with the performance against Tyson Fury, you could make a better case for a rematch. But Otto Valin has sort of been sitting for most of the past year and change, not really doing too much. It seemingly, they were looking to sort of cash in on that um, performance that Valin put up against Fury, but finding very few takers probably for the price tag that they were putting up. So ultimately, Otto Valin sat for the best part of the year after that fight, not really doing too much. And ultimately, he's only had one fight since since a tune-up against Travis Kaufman. Otto Valin looked decent in that performance, but you know, ultimately it was what it was. It was a tune-up, so it's hard to really sort of read too much into it. I mean, there was the sort of talk by Salita and Co that, you know, based on the performance against Kaufman, he'd proven that he was um, a real top contender of, you know, of note. But um, you can only take so much facing guys that are gatekeepers. And Otto Valin, if he'd had tough fights, I could make a much better case that we'd want to see a rematch with Tyson Fury. But he hasn't. I'm not necessarily thirsting for it. I mean, how about you? I mean, I'm interested in your take on this. And I think when I've seen in recent videos, uh, when people have talked about potential opponents for Tyson Fury, Otto Valin's name isn't necessarily at the tip of people's tongue when they're sort of talking about who they want to see Fury in against. You have had a lot of people saying Michael Hunter. You've had people saying Andy Ruiz, people saying Ajit Kabiao. Um, other names too. I've seen a few people say Daniel Dubois, Efaya Jagba, Filip Hergovic, other prospects, um, other contenders in the division as well. Some people saying he's just got to have a meaningful fight. They'd rather see Luis Ortiz or um, Dillian White. Haven't seen too many people saying, look, um, Otto Valin has to have this. And I think based off the fact Tyson Fury's beaten him, even though he got a cut, he still won the rounds. I mean, it'd be a bit of a tough sell for, for me, at least. Um, I can see there's a few threads to get a rematch, but probably not enough. You let me know what you think on that one. Another guy that's uh, had some support is Michael Hunter. And online on Twitter, he's been sort of uh, reposting, see here on screen, people saying about him versus Tyson Fury. And that's actually a fight that um, does have some interest for me, especially given that there is a thread back to the amateurs. And Michael Hunter's actually spoken about this quite Quite often um, that he had a fight with Tyson Fury, that he sort of put it on Tyson Fury, that he should have actually got the decision, but ultimately Fury got the nod. So I haven't seen that fight to sort of uh, form an opinion myself, but there is some history there. And I know Michael Hunter, from what we've seen him do in the past sort of 18 months or so, he is a worthy contender, but he's not with the promoter at the moment. But the question is, I guess, if he ultimately signs some sort of uh, deal with top rank, does that put him square in the picture? Or does that represent in Michael Hunter, who's a very tricky and awkward fighter, maybe a bit too much risk for Tyson Fury if he is looking to get into an Anthony Joshua fight next after this December the 5th fight? Those sorts of questions will factor in. 
So it's going to be interesting to see who they do actually lock in as the opponent. But I think if you're outside of the top ranked tent, maybe it's going to be a little unlikely. But there's nothing to say that Michael Hunter can't sign some sort of short term deal, which would have him in a fight and probably involve a rematch clause. Let's face it, that would be part of it. But what do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.